Uh, survival Survivor Warehouse Wireless Edition. So I don't know how many of you do work in warehouses lately, but it seems that this is the year of warehouse Wi-Fi for me. Uh, I currently have a couple of different companies we're doing work with, uh, multinational corporations, and I probably have about 40 warehouses in the works right now. Um, so here we go. Just so it's clear, I am not Sam Clements. I uh, just wanted to make sure that that was established at the very get-go. Uh, this is a little bit about me. We'll skip all that. You can find me later on Twitter. Uh, so warehouses. This is a prototypical warehouse. Uh, stuff stacked in the shelves as high as the eye can see. Uh, very dense materials, cardboards, plastics, metals, things of that nature. All of these things are the bane of our existence as wireless engineers. Because the one problem that we have with every single thing in that shelf right now is they are very good attenuators and they create a lot of hassles trying to get wireless from the ceiling that you see up here to the users that you see down here. So what are we looking at when we talk about warehouse wireless as far as concerns? So number one, of course, is always gonna be coverage, right? The number one thing as a wireless engineer that we have to focus upon getting right to begin with is coverage. We need the adequate SNR or SINR, whichever one you like to use, uh, at the users so that they can successfully transmit and receive data efficiently, get on the air, get off the air, all right? How do those things play into a wireless uh, warehouse when it comes to wireless and our clients? Well, first of all, the clients are a little bit different in warehouses than they are in, say, an office space or an amusement park or a stadium, right? We're looking at a few devices transmitting very small amounts of information. Typically, we're shooting barcodes across, you know, something of that nature. We're not dealing with voice-heavy or data-heavy requirements that are going to necessarily eat up a lot of airtime. So the first things that we look at are physical appearance. What is the building size? How much clearance do we have from the top of the rack to the possible mounting location for an access point or an antenna? How wide are the aisles? You know, things of that nature play heavily into what you do from a design perspective and also play into effect uh, how you approach the coverage and what access point and antenna combination that you choose to use. So this is one of the warehouses that I've been working in lately. Very, very dense shelving units, a lot of metal around there. You'll see on the image on the right, we've got some uh, assembly stations that are being used in this particular facility. Um, we're starting to see more hybrid approaches to warehouses where they're not just shelving units anymore. It's a lot of uh, a distribution center, say, on one side, and then a manufacturing and assembly stage on the other. And obviously, both of those are going to have different sets of requirements. However, they're in the same physical space, so it becomes a challenge to be able to provide good service to your users in these spaces. The other concern that when it comes to coverage is, what are our mounting options? There's a couple of different approaches, obviously, in warehouse wireless that I like to use, one being overhead and two being end of aisle. Anybody have uh, a warehouse that they've done coverage in? What is the number one problem when you put APs on the end of an aisle or anywhere that is accessible to humans? The forklift, the bane of our existence, number two, right? Those things can do damage like no other. So obviously, we want to try to get the access points up and out of the way. Now, this is an image of what not to do, or is it? We'll leave that for Thursday when Sam talks. But one of the cons of providing overhead omni coverage is we have poor signal penetration. Now, what do I mean by poor signal penetration, right? You've got the access point up high. We do this in all of our facilities now, or whether it be an office or school or whatever, and the coverage tends to be adequate. Well, what you don't know about it is this particular image, that access point is 35 feet off the ground with a very low gain omnidirectional rubber duck antenna. Right, so everybody knows that the pattern of an omnidirectional coverage coming out of that antenna is gonna be the donut shape. So unless we have a super high gain antenna that can stretch that donut down to the floor, we're obviously not gonna get coverage where our users are. So we're not really looking at that. The pros are they're easy to deploy and they provide a large coverage area. So this is why you see this deployment method used a lot in warehouses. There wasn't a lot of devices, they didn't need a lot of data, so it kind of worked for the most part and they were okay with that. But times change. So this is a five gig passive survey done in one of my facilities lately that I was working on. And you can see using the overhead omnidirectional coverage, it's pretty poor. End of aisle, potential obstructions. We talked about forklifts already. The pros are it gives you good line of sight and increases that SNR to your users 
and we have the ability to use our aisles now as attenuation areas to prevent us from running into problems with CCI. Especially in large warehouses, you typically see a lot of CCI. So I try to do things that allow us to increase the attenuation in the environment in such a way that we're able to kind of channel that signal where we want it, like any good engineer should do. So aisle overhead directional. This is probably the one that I've spent the most time doing lately. The, the cons are that you're now putting an access point down every aisle, right? So your costs increase a good bit, especially depending on the size of the facility. However, in my opinion, customers sometimes agree, sometimes don't, but in my opinion as an engineer, the pros far outweigh the cons. We have increased signal to noise ratio, so we get better signal down the aisles. We maximize the attenuation because now we're shooting from above directly down, oops, sorry, directly down into the aisle, letting the signal spread out to each side, and we're not being, we're not running the risk, excuse me, of having obstructions like forklifts that are driving down the aisle blocking the signal from that access point on one of the ends. Now it's a little bit more challenging. You have to have some specialized antennas, which they're out on the market now. If you've read my blog post last August, you know some that are out there. Uh, but it's something that you need to take into consideration when you're looking at the design of your facility. And I think that's very important. Um, we're actually seeing very good success with this in our warehouses that we're deploying right now. Uh, concern number two, devices, right? We can't, can't have wireless can't have good wireless without having devices that can use it. So what do we have from warehouse facilities? So these are showing a couple of different devices, um, Telzons, Motorola devices here. You'll notice that I put TX power. Each of these devices has different transmit power, obviously, but what you have to look at very carefully is that some of the de devices have different transmit powers even within the channels that they broadcast on. So for instance, the little handheld there on the, in the center of the image will say use 50 milliwatts on uni one, but in uni three, it may only broadcast at 25 or 30 milliwatts, right? So that's something that you do need to be cognizant of when you're doing your designs. And concern number three, performance. Roaming, voice, throughput, all concerns. We're not really gonna talk about them in our presentation today, but I did wanna mention them. So what do we do when it comes to warehouse wireless? Now I'm really confused because you've thrown a lot of information at me really quickly. So five tenants, Survival tips of Wi-Fi wireless. Evaluate the space over time. What the warehouse looks like in December may not be what the warehouse looks like in May. Seasonal businesses like Christmas typically tend to stock around uh, March to April or say, but then as we get to the closer to the end of the year, the shelving starts emptying out as we move product out of those warehouses in preparation for the holiday season, completely changes the wireless pattern and the coverage that you're looking to uh, expect and provide. So evaluate those spaces over time. Number two, choose your APs and antennas wisely. Make sure you have quality components. Make sure you put them in good places so that you're not gonna have the forklift problem. You'll probably have pretty good success. Number three, maximize signal, signal attenuation. Use the, the properties of the warehouse to your advantage. Use the aisles, use the shelving, use the mounting locations even, use the building itself to maximize that attenuation so that you can eliminate your ACI and CCI in the environment. This will help you a tremendous amount in most warehouses. And number four, build accurate predictive models. Spend the time in Ekahau or your planning tool of choice, which should always be Ekahau, and make sure that you do it properly. Uh, this will pay off dividends in the end. Survival tip number five, test, test, test. That's the one that I can't stress the most. Uh, I spend a lot of time in warehouses with the gear that I'm looking at deploying, whether it's some that I've currently got uh, deployed or it's something new that I'm testing out, uh, just to try to stay aware of what the signal is going to look like in that facility. Even if I measure that antenna a hundred times across a hundred different warehouse facilities that are the same, it's the one thing that you need to spend the most time doing. Just put the time in because the work up front will save you a lot of headaches in the end. And lastly, if you didn't know, I do a new podcast for everybody. Uh, it's called The Contention Window with my co-host, Tony Odia, down here on the front row. Uh, we have stickers. I know everyone loves stickers. Find one of us, we'll get you a sticker. And we're available on Twitter, uh, as well as for subscription on iTunes, Google Music, and Stitcher. Everybody's brain fried? Okay, cool, thanks.